Hello Westview, it's the middle of the week and uh, it's good to check in with you. I was so excited this past Sunday, September the 12th, we had the chance to be back together for in-person worship, uh, first time since last December, and it was just so exciting. I think there was a real sense of anticipation for me, for all of us who gathered together, and a real sense of joy as we reconnected both before and after the service. It was also just amazing to be able to sing with one voice again. It was amazing because we have waited so long for it and during that wait we've experienced you know, some really strange, hard times. We have missed things, we have lost things, we have lost people, we, we are grieving different things and, and we have longed for that sense of connectedness, for that chance to worship more freely. So it is good that we are able to do that again. Recognizing again that not everyone felt comfortable coming together or was able to gather with us this past Sunday and that is fine. We are delighted that you're connecting with us in other ways. But that joy that we experienced doesn't negate the losses we've also experienced over the last year and a half. And this coming Sunday, we want to acknowledge that. It will still be a joy to gather together, but it's important that we at least take the chance to name the things that we have lost, the things that we missed, the loved ones who are no longer with us, and hand those over to our Lord who understands loss and has experienced it himself. God has not promised us a fully joyful life, a life free from grief and pain, but nor has he told us that we are alone in that grief and pain that we experience. In fact, there's this mix of joy and grief as we go through life, but God has promised to be there with us. There's a psalm, Psalm 126, that speaks about the joy and the grief that we can experience. This was uh, an expression of praise to God when uh, those who'd been taken away in exile came back. They returned. And it says, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out with weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. And that psalm reminds us that, that there are both sides to life, the, the sorrow but also the celebration. This coming Sunday, it will be a celebration, again, to be together, to remember our risen Lord together in praise, but also to remember losses we've experienced and to look for the hope that the Lord gives to us. Uh, this is a, an exciting Sunday as well for me because in the afternoon, I will have the privilege of baptizing two people uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Ken Geddes and David Connor, who both have made professions of faith. Um, because of logistical reasons, we won't be able to do it in the building, but we will be having an outdoor uh, baptismal service that we will video and share with all of you the following Sunday. So there again, life has its ups and its downs, its joy and its pain, um, and we hold them together because we stand with the God who understands the pain and who is the source of our joy. So. If you are ready, if you are comfortable, we invite you to come and join with us in person this Sunday uh, to remember, to grieve, and to hope as well. And if you're not ready, continue to join with us online or by our audio messages and join with us in your own way uh, as we walk this road with our Lord who is the source of our joy, who is the source of our hope. God bless you and we'll talk soon.